Well, the Diagnostics Data Collection that Will Cook proposed back in February the 14th, 2018, came to fruition in Ubuntu 18.04 with a tool called Ubuntu Report. And since it's an open source package, you can actually look at what it's doing, you can read some of the information about it, and they have provided a method of viewing the information that has been collected about your system, and you can submit it to an alternate server. The information on GitHub is mm, only just about sufficient, barely. So the tool will show you what is going to be reported and ask for your acknowledgement before uploading it. It will mainly be invoked by a GUI, but also provides a command line tool. The Ubuntu Welcome UI has a dedicated panel for this report collection and upload. The command line tool, as well as the Go and C API have different modes, and there's four of them listed there. And by default, you can only report your data collection once per distribution version. So there's a few different options you can use on the command line mode, but this only goes through how the tool works and some of the sample data that is sent to the server. And yet yeah, that sample data there is about what gets sent. Can't disagree with that. And if you don't agree, it does still send data, but the data that's sent is opt out true. The tool's been used for data collection as standard bash commands. For example, we have XRLR, disk free, LSPCI or list PCI, and DPKG print architecture. Let's fire up a brand new virtual machine with Wireshark enabled and some logs from NoTrack. I was playing around with this earlier and I recreated the virtual machine but kept the same MAC address. So that's why you can see uh, this random address here. So I was retyping the system name. Most of the connections I observed were perfectly fine. However, this one was a bit of a puzzle because that address is owned by LogMeIn, but it could be to do with the kernel live patch service, but I'm not entirely sure. There was something invoked with Snapcraft, so yeah, don't know. I can't prove or disprove entirely what it was. Anyway, here is the virtual machine that we're going to play with. So live patch service, not too interested in that at this time. So let's go next. Here is the Ubuntu report service, so show the first report. So we have the product vendor, in this case it is VirtualBox. The CPU, now this is very specific on the CPU information, in other words it identifies your model CPU exactly. I mean, it's not specific to you personally, but it is very much the CPU you have in your system. I wonder why they did that, rather than just saying simply 64, 32-bit or ARM architecture, and going for the make of CPU. I could understand needing further information if I was doing a bug report, but I'm not, I'm just having to share my system information. Okay, it shows the memory usage, partitions, screen resolution, and some of the options I chose during the system install. So I've auto login, live patch, well actually live patch I went for a moment ago, the desktop environment, the desktop environment I'm currently logged into as well as some of the other options I chose, and I think that's to do with sort of timing. So on its own, I don't really have a problem with this. I just worry about the future, really, in that if we say this is acceptable, does Canonical try and push its luck, or do other distributions try and push their luck? So go on then, send the information, and we're done. In terms of actually seeing the data being sent, we do have the look up here, metrics.ubuntu.com and this will be the encrypted data transfer. I won't be able to actually see anything here. All I can do is just follow the stream, uh, just follow the TCP stream, and yeah, that's, uh, that's illegible. So fair enough, they're sending the data encrypted. You can take a retrospective look at what has been sent to Ubuntu by reviewing the file.cache slash Ubuntu report slash Ubuntu and your current version. And yes, that would appear to be what was sent. You can also get the same information by typing the command Ubuntu report show. Let's take a look at one of the reports being sent. So you can force it to resend and override to a specific URL. And that is a web server, which actually is no track. So the irony, I'm sending tracking data to no track, but yep, that's entirely what it was designed for. And with Wireshark, I can review that connection because it is unencrypted with HTTP. Um, yes, we shall, actually no, let's say we won't send the metrics this time. So no, and we'll see what gets sent. Standard query request, sky.tzd, 
that would be no track and that will be the data being sent here so follow tcp stream okay this is a post data request and we have sent this blob of data in red now interestingly despite opting out we have actually revealed some information because it has posted to the folder ubuntu slash desktop slash 1804 in other words the distribution and version and the specific data it sent is opt out true I don't actually know what has been logged on the server side, but the only other information it could have gained is IP address. Now, whether that is being stored or not, I do not know, and I cannot say from what I'm seeing on my client side. Let's try again and actually send the data this time. So yes, and that'll be the data being sent right here. So yeah, I can follow stream, follow TCP stream, and we can see that further data has actually been sent this time. That was the data that's presented to me earlier. So yeah, they're taking the data that they are showing. And the last thing I can play around with is actually send the data encrypted. Now this will fail because I have an invalid certificate. Well, it's a self-signed certificate, but it does the job for what it needs to do in that it needs to be able to respond to every website that is being sent to it. So yeah, error data were not delivered successfully to the metric server couldn't send a post HTTP request. And then it correctly says that certificate signed by unknown authority. Okay, so that was a look at Ubuntu report in action. Next video, I'll be showing you how to disable this. Now bear in mind, this is just one part of the information tracking. The other part is that popularity contest and automatic bug data submission are also enabled. And I'll be showing you how to disable those in my next video. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.